Um, one thing that you know often comes up is, you, like I said, you go to a library and and you can't find the specific thing that you want to model. The geometry is not there, or some weird shaped geometry, or maybe you get to a problem where you have like um, you somehow discretize the surface into some numerical mesh, and you want to look at um, all the combinations. And to do that is really cumbersome if you're doing it manually. One thing you can do instead is introduce a numerical method to evaluate view factors. That numerical method, or the most common one, is called uh, Monte Carlo ray tracing. Um, so let me just flip back here so we can talk through it. So the Monte Carlo method, uh, the name for that, first of all, comes from the casino, or the town containing many casinos in, uh, where is it, Europe somewhere. Um, but the idea is that it's, it's like rolling the dice. So you start from a surface, and you have to choose a position on that surface from which to emit a photon, or emit a ray, as we'll call it. So you roll the dice in both coordinates, and you say, all right, here's where I end up. It's at this spot. Then again, what you do is you roll the dice again, and you have to decide which direction am I going to emit. So you pick an angle or set of angles, and then you emit that ray. So you, you, once you've emitted the ray, then you have to do a test to see if any other surface in your system is hit by that ray. If it is, you count it in, in a, uh, you keep track of that number that have hit. If it's not, you sort of throw it away. In the end, you, you say, my fraction of light that would go from A to B, or 1 to 2, uh, would be the number of hits divided by the number that I emitted. Right? So it's, it's um, a really simple method. It's a little tricky to implement. Um, but it's uh, really powerful. It lets you uh, evaluate a huge uh, variety of, of geometries. So let's just maybe talk through that a little bit more carefully. Um, so the Monte Carlo method, um, the characteristics of that are as follows. Let's say it uses a random sampling. Um, it uh, is something called stochastic. Um, stochastic means um, you're never quite sure of a specific result, but the general result is um, uh, true, right? So you converge to a general result, while in any individual location not being quite 100% um, um, sure of it. Uh, it is uh, accommodating Uh, accommodating of real surfaces. Um, what I mean there is like weird shapes, uh, optical properties that aren't, you know, black body, that kind of thing. Um, so it's a really flexible technique. Um, so I already kind of talked through the method, but I'll just write it down for you so we, we have it again. So let's see, I have about five steps here. One is randomly select randomly select a location on the emitting surface. OK, so let me just uh, sketch this out while we're doing it, hopefully save myself some room. So here's my emitting surface. Um, I'm going to randomly pick some coordinate. Let's pick that coordinate here. So I randomly pick that coordinate probably by sampling in, in let's call this, uh, direction x, let's call this direction y, x and y. So I do like a uniform random sample in whatever program I'm writing this in of the coordinate in both, um, or of the, the position in both coordinates, that's my position. Okay, so that's step one, randomly select the position. Step two would be um, randomly select direction. OK, so now if I pick some ray that's going to go off, it's going to be at an angle. Uh, we could call this angle um, on the ground phi. And we could call this elevation angle uh, maybe theta. So I would have to pick a random theta and a random phi, or phi, however you want to say it. And it'll emit off in that direction from that position. Step three would be, um, if it's non-gray, uh, select a wavelength. 
So let's say I want to do this for uh, surfaces that have properties that vary as a function of wavelength or um, transmission that varies as a function of wavelength or something like that. Which, by the way, if you're trying to model like atmospheric conditions, uh, you're doing ray tracing, those have to account for wavelengths because the absorption of uh, species in the atmosphere is wavelength dependent. Um, so, okay, you'd select the wavelength. If that was the case, it, it probably won't be for what we're doing. Um, but if it, was, if it was, you'd do it there. Step four would be uh, check for intersection uh, with other surfaces. Okay, sounds easy, sometimes not easy. You have to you know, project this ray out and then do a hit test on a, um, all the different shapes that you have. Um, and then five, repeat many times. Okay, and by many times, I guess what I mean there is you have to repeat this until the answer stops changing, the answer that you care about. Maybe that's a view factor. So if I were to run five rays and I hit one ray, um, that's a 20% view factor. But if I ran a six ray and it hit that, uh, hit that surface again, that significantly changes my answer. So you have to just keep running rays until your view factor stops changing, which we call convergence, and numerical, numerical convergence. Okay, so that's generally the method. Um, let's see. Uh, we can talk through maybe a little bit more on the, the geometry side of it, but uh, let's do that on the next slide. Uh, first, are there any, any questions on the method? Yeah. So the easiest way to conceptually think about it is uh, to think of it as a single, a single photon at a time. Um, like you would randomly pick a coordinate, random, randomly pick a coordinate, do the thing, do the test and all that. that. That is done one at a time. There's no need for it to be related to other photons, if that's kind of what you're asking. But the, this method itself actually lends itself really well to uh, parallelization. So if you have a, a supercomputer and you can run hundreds of threads or maybe you have a graphics card. This is what, by the way, if you're doing like, um, if you're into gaming, right? Gaming and like these big beefy graphics cards that you buy, like $1,000 for a graphics card. That's what this stuff is doing. It's basically doing ray, ray tracing really quickly, you know, uh, hundreds of times a second sometimes. But it, it, is, it is testing for where light is going in the space and then rendering it um, based on that. But that, the graphics card itself is, is built so that you can simultaneously test or emit and test thousands or hundreds of thousands, at, you know, in, in parallel. So in limited, in limited uh, cases, you can do it systematically. The risk is that uh, if you go to any kind of complicated geometry, the amount of work you have to put in to make sure that your system isn't biasing the results is significant. So like if, if here I, um, let's, let's take this example. So if I uh, had a geometry that was like, I don't know, some kind of pentagonal form like this, I have to, I have to systematically figure out how to test all these different positions in this, in this space without like favoring one side over the other side or favoring a corner, right? And so like, I guess you could set it up where yeah, you maybe make a grid um, and, and do even testing, but that's just on the emission side. Then on the absorption side, let's say that there happened to be, um, you know, there happened to be some plate up here that was positioned just so, so that when you're emitting over at, in this row, um, it's sort of unlikely to hit it, but you're emitting in this row, it's more likely to hit it. So you get these like weird, unexpected biasing effects that happen. So the safest way to deal with that is just to do it randomly and do it enough where it stops changing. So it's like, it's like a, a fail safe method, pretty much. Um, but but there, are, there are tools that will go to great lengths to like systematically test certain geometries or certain systems. Um, and they claim to be faster, but then I always wonder if they have bias in them. So it is, yeah. I mean, by really expensive, um, so in the, as an example, in some of the research that I've been involved in, 
developing software that does this, you can trace like a million rays for um, say 10,000 surfaces. If you're sort of systematic about like um, setting up the geometry, you can do that in like 10, 20 minutes or something. It is flexible, but that flexibility comes at the cost of potentially taking a long time. It's kind of like an FEA thing, you know, where it's, you can do anything with it, but you might have to wait a week.